Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm Sethum, and today in this video, folks, I'm going to show you how to tame the basic starter dinos for those that are starting out in the game of Ark. If you folks find this video useful and the information in it and or enjoy it, please do not forget to support me and the channel by subscribing to my channel as well as hitting that like button. Additionally, you can check out some of my other videos on the channel who knows you might just enjoy them. You can also find links to those videos either via the annotation cards at the top right corner of the screen as well as down in a pinned comment and in the end screen at the end of this video. So as I was saying at the beginning of this video, I am going to show you everything you need to know about taming dinos, what you need to do and how to tame them. And also I will be covering the starter dinos and what they are good for. I have brought up my inventory to show you guys what I will be using throughout the video. And as you can see, these are all the starter things that you can achieve up to level 15. So I've got some spears, I've got some arrows, a crossbow, a bowler, some narcotics and some food to feed the dinos, which consists of meho berries or major berries and raw meat for the carnivores. In my hot bar, I also have a slingshot and a club to use to knock out the dinos, which are not meant to be passive tames. Okay, so the first thing that we'll be looking at is this wonderful creature right here, which is an otter, and it is a passive tame. So that means you do not need to knock it out to be able to tame it. However, you do need to go and kill fish, and then drag it to it and feed it by pressing E. So I'm going to hunt for another fish. For this particular tame, I am using God stats just to make things easier, so I can show you guys what to do and how to tame a passive creature. Obviously, there are different ways to tame different creatures in a passive manner. Each creature has its own method. This particular creature is a bit different than most of the passive tameable creatures in the game of Ark, which is why I decided to show you this creature, as it does involve finding and killing a fish, then grabbing and holding the fish to feed the R. You can do this by holding down E until you get the radial menu and select drag fish. So there is a fish. I'm going to go and kill this fish. It is a skittish creature, so that means it will not attack us. You can also use other fish such as mega piranhas. However, they are more dangerous to hunt, so I'm going to go for the easier ones. So I have trapped the fish. I am going to kill it. As you can see, the game automatically put the fish in my hands. So now I'm going to go and find our otter friend and see. Okay, so let's see where he's gone to. He's not on the land. I'm going to be wary of that dillo because I will show you how to tame it as well after I have finished with the otter. Okay, so... It is not on land. That means it might be in the water. And it is actually easier to tame in water than on land. Because they move much more on land than they do on water. So I am going to get close to the otter. Once I have the prompt that says feed the otter. I will then press E to feed it the fish. There we go. As you can see there is a taming bar. So we need another fish. I have fed it a fish before I started recording so it did have some taming in the taming bar and if you will be taming otters underwater like I am you do need to bear in mind how much oxygen you have as well as how much stamina you have obviously if you do run out of stamina that means you will drown and die and if you are far from a spawn point you might lose your tame and obviously all the stuff that you have with you so I'm going to go and give it this last fish. That should be enough for this little fella. Once I catch up with him. Now as you can see he doesn't move around that much in water. He moves a lot more on the ground. Which makes the taming process a lot more complicated on ground from what I have experienced. There we go. We have another. We have this message screen where we can give it a name. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to pick it up. You can pick it up 
by pressing E when you're close to it. And as it is a shoulder mount, it will sit around your neck and it will act as a form of protection from the cold. So it will give you some insulation. Okay, so the next thing we're going to tame is this wonderful creature right here. It is a Dillo. Okay, when it brings up its throat like that, you will want to move to the side. Otherwise, you will be blinded like I have. Also, you will be slowed down. You will need a bowler to immobilize it, which is what I do recommend, and a slingshot to hit it from the distance. So I just moved to the side once it brought its thrill up, and as you saw, it missed its mark. So I'm just going to keep aiming for its head until it is knocked down. It is now knocked down, so I'm going to access its inventory by pressing E, and I will put in some raw meat. As this is a low level, I will not need any narcotics to put in to keep it knocked out. However, on higher level creatures or higher end creatures, you will need narcotics to keep it knocked out. It will tame pretty fast and this is one of the starter dinos, as is the otter. As you can see, it is quite easy to tame. It doesn't need a lot. In the meantime, I am going to gather some more stones whilst it is taming. I'm going to keep an eye on it. I am not going to wander too far because I want to protect it in case it gets attacked by other creatures. The purple bar symbolizes the amount of torpor which will decrease with time and the brown bar symbolizes how much it has tamed. Once it reaches 100% the creature will have been tamed and it is yours to keep and do what you want with it. When starting out in the game you can use this to create a small army of dillos which will help you hunt and gather meat as well as hide. I have also got some major berries which I'm going to put in my zero slot. This is what is the most common method of passive taming for the creatures. So they will require a specific food item which you will put in your zero slot and then walk up to it and press E to feed it. I will show you this later on in the video. At the moment I am going to keep a watchful eye over my Dillo and as I am starting out as you will as well. I am not going to be bothered about the levels of the dinos as these are starter dinos and later on I will put them into an egg farm which I will explain what the purposes are and I will show you how to make kibbles out of eggs in another video. As the dillo doesn't take a long time to tame I am not going to do any cuts so you guys can see how much you should wait for it to tame with other creatures and bigger creatures you will need to wait a longer time and there are various calculators out on the internet that you can use to calculate the amount of food you'll need as well as narcotics to keep them knock out as well as what sort of food they prefer each creature in the game does have its own preferences you can use meat or berries for the most of them however it will lengthen the amount of time that it will take to tame that specific creature. The higher the level the creature is, the more time it will take to tame. Also, by using kibbles, you will not just only shorten the time, but you will get a better taming effectiveness, which means you will get more levels, and with each level that the creature gains, it will get a random point attributed to one of its stats, so that means that creature will be better and more powerful with a higher taming effectiveness. As this is a starter guide for people that want to learn to tame creatures, I will not be using any kibbles and I will be using only stuff that you get in the beginning such as raw meat and berries and stuff such as rare flowers which you can find from time to time by farming the stuff around the environment. Okay so with that dillo tamed I am going to go and find another creature. As you can see, it is following me. It's an automatic thing that happens once a creature has tamed. Okay, so the next creature that we will be taming is a trike. Because this is a passive creature and becomes aggressive when you start hitting it, you will want to find a safe place to tame it from. In this case, I'm using a slingshot. I have managed to get myself on a rock and I am shooting rocks at its body. Very important do not hit its head because it will take reduced damage and therefore reduce torpor. So that means it'll take you a lot longer to tame it or will knock it out for the process of taming it. 
You can do this by pressing and holding down the T button on the keyboard and selecting the passive option out of the radial menu. So this will make your tame be passive, so that means it will not attack other creatures even if it is being attacked, which is a benefit if you are going to try and knock out or attack a passive creature, or a creature that is naturally passive and then becomes aggressive once attacked. That means the creature that I want to attack or tame will focus on me and not on my tame. Also, it is important to know that if you do attack a creature that is close or in the vicinity of another creature of the exact same family, so for example, I attacked the trike and it was close to another trike, both of those creatures will attack even if they were initially passive. So I'm going to go and check my trike down there. You will see that it has a purple bar which symbolizes the amount of torpor it has. That will decrease with time. And when it reaches zero, it will wake up. As the trike takes a long time to wake up, I am not going to bother with putting food in its inventory just yet. I am going to wait for its hunger to go down a bit. And the hungrier it is, the quicker it will eat the berries. And we'll need to feed it berries as it is a herbivore. I am going to try and aggravate this trike over there. Now, I will want to try and tame it if I can, or if not, try and kite it into a sarco that is wandering the beach around here, which you will probably see in a bit. There is the sarco that is a giant alligator, basically, and it is aggressive. If I can tame two trikes, then that is good. If it runs into the sarco, then hopefully it will kite it away from my tame. That is a thing that is currently threatening my tame. Hopefully it does not make its way here. Also, you will want to know that if you have aggroed a creature, just wait for a while. Do not attack it anymore and find a safe place to wait it out as it will lose interest if it can't get to you. I hope that the strike is now stuck, so I'm going to try and hit it a couple of more times. And as you can see, because it cannot get to me, it will then start running away. You can, and I do recommend that you use the trees and other environmental obstacles to try and block the creatures from getting to you where possible, especially the star creatures. You will not need to build a trap. It is pointless in doing that. But for bigger, harder creatures, you will need to build traps. So as you can see, the trike is running towards the Sarko. That might just work in my favor if it does aggravate the Sarko. I'm quickly going to replace my sting shot. So I have brought a few of them with me because I know they break quite easily. And it looks like the trike is guiding the Sarko towards the water. So I'm just going to keep an eye on them for the moment to see what is going to happen. I don't want to get involved in that. It looks like the trike is losing. I'm going to try and help it out if I can from here. Well, it looks like the Sarko won. It is closer to the water, so I do hope it goes into the water because it is a fast swimmer and most likely will end up moving away from my tame, which is beneficial for me. So I'm going to check out my tame. He's doing all right. He's a bit hungry, so we'll give him some berries. I've put in some narco berries. There's no point in using narcotics because it is hard to craft. And this is a starter dino. I will show you how to use the narcotics to get its torpor back up. I'm just going to check quickly to see what the sarco is up to. I can't see it anymore. So let's sort out its torpor, which is decreasing. And we can do that by putting in narcotics or narco berries and hovering the mouse over it when pressing E. This will force feed the trike the narcotics or narco berries, which will in turn increase its torpor. As you can see, it is rising with the amount of narco berries that I have force fed it. There is no point in trying to force feed a taming creature the food. It will not tame any faster, so don't bother with that. It will eat when it gets hungry.
So I'm going to try and make my way back up here. And as I can see from the shadows, there is a Pelagorna. So I'm going to try and sort this guy out. Oh, this is going to be annoying. Otherwise, he will take all of my stuff off of me and destroy it. So I'm going to try and kill this guy. This will be a good source of meat as well as hide. Okay, so he's only taking stuff that I don't really care about at the moment. There you go. Done and done. So I'm going to harvest them. I'm going to take out my hatchet. And that is that. Oh, Sarko's still there. Okay, I'm going to need to keep an eye out on that Sarko. As it seems to still be around here. And hopefully my trike will survive the night. So I'll see you folks in a bit. Alright, so as the Sarko has wandered off, I am going to show you guys what you need to craft the saddle for the trike. The trike is a rideable dino and it can be used to harvest wood, thatch and berries. You can learn the Enneagram at level 16. This will be the skill that will allow you to craft a trike saddle and as you've seen we'll need hide, wood and fiber. So let's craft a saddle whilst our trike is sleeping. Once it is up, you can place the saddle on the creature by accessing its inventory once it has been tamed and then dragging the saddle out of your inventory by holding down left click and dropping it into the creature's saddle slot which is labeled and will appear in the upper right corner of the middle tab which shows the creature's stats. Once you have put a saddle on your tame, you can then ride it by going up to your tame and pressing down E. So as you can see here, I am looking at my creature. I have the prompt to press down E to ride it. I have done so and with left click, you can harvest things. So a trike is able to harvest berries and seeds, as you can see. If you go up to a tree and left click which is also the attack you can harvest wood and thatch so the next creature that i'm going to show you how to tame is that wonderful little bird down there that is called a dodo and whilst they don't really do a lot they are good for eggs so i want one of these things you can use a bowler if it is in a dangerous area but as the sarko has left the beach i'm going to use a club and just knock it over the head until it falls to the ground like so once it is down, I am going to put some more major berries in it. Because it is a small level, it will not require any narcotic. However, higher level dodos might require one or two narco berries. So I'm just going to mount my trike, like I've told you before, by pressing down E, harvest some wood, and guard my dodo. At this time, I also have my Dillo with me, so I am feeling fairly confident. This is a decent level trike. As it is a low level dodo, I didn't put any narco berries in it, and it will not need any narco berries. I am just going to wait around here to protect it, and because it takes a short amount of time to tame it, I will not cut to the point where it is tamed so you guys can see how quickly this creature tames and as i have already said countless times throughout the video these are starter dinos so therefore they don't take a lot of resources or time to tame okay with the dodo tamed i'm going to head back to base and get these guys back to safety so i'll see you guys in a bit with the next creatures okay so here we are with the next creature this is a lystrosaurus and like the first creature that I have tamed, it is a passive tame. You can tame it by putting major berries or any kind of berries in your uh, zero slot bar, walking up to it and then pressing E to feed it. Then you'll have to wait until it is hungry again. You can also use rare flowers, which you can find by harvesting plants and trees in the swamp. You can also find them in other areas, but they are rarer to find. 
as you've seen, I have given it a major berry. It gave it a very, very little amount of taming. Now I've given it a rare flower and just look at how much it has increased its taming bar. So you will want to give it rare flowers as it does prefer rare flowers and it does shorten the amount of taming as well as increase the taming effectiveness. So now we will have to wait for it to get hungry again and it should only require one more rare flower for it to be fully tamed. So we'll just have to wait for it to be hungry again and then we'll give it that flower. There we go. One tamed Lystrosaurus. Another creature that we can tame and it is a good starter dino is this creature over here. This is a Parasaur and you need to be careful unlike the trike once you have hit it it will want to run away and if you chase it you might end up finding yourself in a very dangerous situation surrounded by very dangerous and lethal creatures so you'll want to use a bowler to immobilize it then a slingshot and hit it in the head where you will do the most damage and therefore apply the most amount of torpor as this is a fairly high level parasaur the bowler will most likely break as it is on a timer so it is going to stay on it for a limited amount of time and then the parasol will run off. So we will have to re it and then continue shooting rocks at it with our slingshot. As you can see it is wanting to run away so I'm going to give chase to it. I'm going to try and cut it off and bowler it again. There we go. And then swap to my slingshot and continue using the slingshot. The lucky side of things is that this creature is now in my base and so therefore wherever it runs it will not be able to get out and I can always cut across its path to reapply a new bowler. Okay so my sting has broken. I can also use my fist to apply torpor However, that will take a longer time or I can use a club. I am going to swap out to another sling. I am going to try and chase it and then cut across its path and bowl it again. Once it reaches the gate, it will realize it can't go any further. So it will start running back towards me and I just need to get in front of it, get my bowler ready and voila, we have one bowled parasaur. It shouldn't take too many more shots now. Obviously this is a very high level creature for the weapon that I'm using, but it's all right. We have managed, it is now knocked out. So I am going to put in major berries. This is of course a herbivore, so therefore it will prefer berries to me. And I am going to keep an eye on it. I am also going to put in some narcotics and narco berries. And once its torpor goes down, I will force feed it the narcotics by hovering the mouse above it and pressing E. You can craft a saddle at level 9. Here are the elements that you'll need to craft it. You can go into your crafting tab and seeing as I've got the materials I am going to craft it, you will need you will need hide, fiber and wood to craft a saddle and just like the trike this is a rideable creature. You can use it to get across the lands better. It is faster than the trike and has a bit more stamina. However, it carries less and you can also use it to harvest berries, berry seeds, as well as thatch and wood, just like the trike. The only difference between the trike and the parasaur is that the trike has a greater area of effect. So therefore it will gather more of those materials. So let's get back to the list of source that we tamed before. If you pet it, it will do this little animation. And as you can see, all my dinos have a yellow arrow pointing upwards. That means they will get an increased rate of XP whilst passively leveling up. So that means whilst not doing anything, their level of XP will be increased for the duration of the arrow. And you can reapply that by going back to the list of source and petting it when the buff has gone away. So as you've just seen there before, I have whistled all of my creatures to passive. I wanted to make sure you can also press U to get the creatures to stop following you as after using the radial option to whistle creatures passive, you may end up with a creature following you. 
The way to do that is by holding down the letter T, then selecting the whistle command that you want to issue. In this case, I am going to feed my Parasaur Narcotics as it applies more Torpor than the Narco Berries. Okay, so once you have gone out and tamed yourself a handful of dinos, you will end up with a lineup similar to mine. And as you can see, they have pink hearts above their names, which means that they are mate boosted. This also means that they will receive some buffs, such as an increase in damage and a resistance to damage from hostile creatures. And because they are mate boosted, they will also lay eggs more often when a player is in the vicinity. So you will want to collect these eggs. These eggs can be used to craft kibbles, which will increase the taming effectiveness on creatures as well as decrease the taming time. It is important to note that each creature in the game has its preferred kibble, so you cannot use the same kibble for every single dino, as it will actually lengthen the time it takes to tame, and obviously this will impact the taming effectiveness. Also, you can use the eggs as food, as you've just seen before, and it will replenish your food. In the next video, I will show you how to make kibbles what element and ingredients you'll need, as well as how to use them. Okay, so what you see behind me is what is known as an egg farm, and this is just the beginning of it. You will need to tame multiple creatures. You will only generally need one male and the rest females if you want to build an egg farm so that you can collect eggs more often, which you can then use to craft kibbles. That is it for this video, folks. I do hope that you have found the information in this video useful. If you have enjoyed it and found it useful, please do not forget to support me and the channel by hitting that like button. Subscribe to the channel for more similar content. And if you're new to the channel, why not go and check out some of my other gameplays and videos? Who knows, you might just enjoy them. Until next time, stay safe, folks.